close and it's in the wrong location in the UK. And those are the uh, lines we will be taking in terms of uh, our objections that we, we shall make as we go as we go forward to the planning stage. Now it's important this project is so big that it will be decided on a national level. This is not a project that will come to your local planning committee. It will go to an organisation called the National Planning Inspectorate, uh, based at Bristol. Uh, they are responsible for judging all of these projects. And it's up to us to make the case through the planning system that this should uh, not occur. Now, we, we frame our uh, objections uh, around uh, six main areas. Leading up to the uh, contention that this is too big, too close in the wrong location. Too big, we're contemplating on this site something like two, up to 212 uh, turbines, individual turbines, each of which will have a tip height, a blade tip height, when it's fully rotated, at the top of 200 metres. I don't know if you understand what 200 metres might look like, but um, many of you I know will, will know Salisbury Cathedral. Um, this uh, tip height will be about 1.6 times the height of Salisbury Cathedral. And those of you who've seen Salisbury Cathedral, when you look down on it, most of the viewpoints for Salisbury, you're looking down into the town so it looks even shorter than it might otherwise do. So that's the sort of scale. If you compare it with uh, the cliffs on the Isle of Wight near the Needles or the Purbeck Cliffs, we're again talking about one and a half to two times the height of those cliffs. It is truly enormous. So that gives you some indication of the size. If you look on the website, you'll see a diagram where we've put one of these turbines adjacent to the pier approach. And it is truly vast. It dwarfs the pavilion and it dwarfs the BIC, the International Conference Centre. So it's enormous. Too big. Uh, too close. The government uh, on the offshore wind programme, which amounts to around uh, a dozen sites that are due to be uh, progressed in this line, uh, commissioned a working party uh, for the strategic assessment of offshore wind, and it concluded that these uh, developments were highly sensitive, and it might be appropriate that they be sited at least 12 nautical miles from the coastline. When you go onto the website, you will see that the position proposed for this website is considerably closer than 12 miles, certainly to Purbeck and certainly to the Isle of Wight. And it will truly dominate the horizon. If you look out from the Bournemouth East Cliff or the West Cliff, about 60 degrees or more of your view uh, field will be consumed uh, with this wind farm. Far too close and should be pushed uh, further offshore. In addition, we uh, believe, and we, we've in fact got material from uh, the Navitus Bay Development Company's own uh, review, that this will have a significant impact on tourism. Uh, they did a survey of tourism and concluded, and the conclusion of that survey is the, the developer's own material, suggested that the tourism in the area would drop by around 14% if this thing were to be built. Now, you may say 14%, 10%, 14%, not too bad. You know, with, with normal growth, we can make that up. But if you take Bournemouth alone, the tourism in Bournemouth alone is worth half a billion pounds of income a year. So you can imagine a slight delta on that will make a significant uh, dent in Bournemouth uh, tourism income, seriously putting businesses out of, out of uh, putting firms out of business, not only in the tourism business, hotels such as this, but also associated businesses uh, allied alongside. So it's a very, very serious uh, issue for tourism. We're talking here about one of the gems of the uh, English countryside and the English coastline. We have 95 miles of the Jurassic uh, World Heritage coastline. 95 miles. This is the UK's only World Heritage site. Not man-made, a natural heritage site. It's our only one. And it's important from a UNESCO point of view that that be treated with respect and not be damaged by any industrialisation of the bay of the sort that we're likely to get uh, with this development. Now, you may think if this development is well out to sea, it won't be very noisy. Well, again, the government has rules and, and uh, levels of noise which are uh, permitted, and we have carried out studies using an independent consultant, a noise consultant, based on the Isle of Wight, who clearly shows that this wind farm, when in operation, will breach the government's noise regulations. 
So as far as we're concerned, it can't be built uh, for that reason alone. In addition to which, the construction period uh, for this site is likely to be four or five years, assuming it's four years. <coughs> Again, from the tourism survey, uh, the uh, tourism survey suggested that a third of visitors would stay away from this area uh, during the construction period. Now, you can just imagine the devastation uh, that would cause. Because, of course, over, that, over those four years, you're likely to be driving, certainly in the good weather, piling 24-7 round the clock, something piles uh, into the ground to uh, support this, this, this wind farm. There's also further research that we're trying to do on what you might call the insidious noise, the uh, infra noise, infrasound, which comes from the background noise when this thing is, is working as well. And that's led in certain parts of the world, certainly in North America and in Australasia, to people suffering from uh, a condition called wind turbine syndrome, which again shouldn't be dismissed, shouldn't be underestimated. We believe there are significant uh, areas of interest there. The English Channel is probably the, if not one of, the busiest shipping lanes uh, in, the, in the world. This uh, wind farm was built, would project right out into the Channel, uh, interfering with shipping, uh, both going to Southampton, London, Rotterdam, you name it. If there were to be a disaster, some of you may remember the Torrey Canyon disaster, that would be extremely serious with what would be 200 obstructions uh, in the English Channel. You can only imagine uh, the havoc that might cause. In addition to which, of course, you will know that the area is one of the most important recreational and competitive sailing venues. So again, you've got a, a complete interruption and a safety hazard uh, from that point of view. In bad weather, fog, you name it, could be very, very dangerous uh, for the, the, uh, the area. We also believe there is a strong possibility that the uh, construction of this wind farm would interfere with radar and other communications. And so we're looking at that aspect of the, of the project as well. Uh, lastly, uh, birds. And again, we're talking about an area here which has got some of the most important bird uh, nesting and, and habitat sites. And also it's an important area both for birds migrating north to south and east to west. Uh, those of you who, um, uh, who know the area well will know how many birds there are and the types and varieties of birds here. And we think a strong case can be made that this will interfere com completely with that. So those are the uh, grounds that we're looking at for local objections. So what are we doing and how can you help us uh, with our endeavours? We are preparing a representation document to go to the planning inspectorate as soon as the planning application is delivered. We expect the company, uh, Navidus Bay Developments Limited, to issue a uh, planning application around the spring, maybe March and April time, and then the project will, the process will become formalised under the planning legislation and will go forward. At that time, we shall be we shall be presenting them with a, a pre representation document the contents of which some of, some of the issues that we'll be raising are shown on our, on our website. Uh, so that will, that will cover visual intrusion from the size of this thing, the proximity uh, to the shore, the uh, noise that it uh, may generate, the impact on tourism, uh, navigation interests and ornithology. Uh, that will be a comprehensive document written rather legalistically uh, to persuade planning inspector that this thing be not built. As part of the process, and some of you may have been involved in this, has any of you been to consultation exhibitions around the, around the area? Yes. Uh, you'll know that the developer has been charged with carrying out consultation. In, the, uh, in 2010, he wrote a statement of community consultation where he listed down what he was going to do in consulting the general public and the community generally about how uh, he was going to take forward his plans. We believe that he has breached that uh, consultation uh, schedule in a number of aspects and we shall be uh, at the same time sending in documentation to challenge that the uh, project was properly consulted on with members of the public. For example, uh, it was open to the uh, developer to send a, a mail drop to every uh, location say in the, coastal, in the coastal strip. That was ruled out by the developer saying it was not financially viable. Well, actually, one of our members 
checked with Royal Mail how much it actually costs to send a leaflet such as this uh, to every household. And I think for 350,000 households, it would have cost 15,000 pounds, wasn't it? A very, very small amount. We're talking here about expenditure of four or five billion pounds. So that's the sort of thing you're dealing with. Uh, the developers, as you may know, are a joint venture between Aneco, which is a Dutch uh, utility owned by local authorities in Holland, and therefore in due course government controlled. And the other partner is Electricité de France, who you may have heard of, EDF, uh, also a big French uh, conurbation, again controlled by the French government. So if you look at the financials and the economics, any profits from this development uh, won't be staying very close uh, to the UK. But I'm sure Lord Moncton might, as, might allude to some of those um, issues, uh, issues later on. So that's what we're trying to do. What I'd like to do is to engage you to support us in every way, which way you can. People say to me, well, Roy, go on, I see the consultation's over, <coughs> and that's it, now we're out of the frame. Well, I can assure you this project is by no means <coughs> over. There's a lot more to, uh, a lot more to come uh, down the track. And I would engage you to visit our website where you'll see what we're doing, and I hope you can join us by registering as interest parties, interested parties in the proposal and make your own represent, representations personally as groups with us to planning inspectorate. So, Chairman, I'll finish there and uh, look forward to speaking to you. What we're saying for lunch, look forward to speaking to you perhaps during the rest of the. to our beautiful coastline, only 13, 14 kilometres out, and the size, which is going to damage, in my view, and the view of most people here, uh, this beautiful coastline. And so what we're asking the government is to rethink this and to move this wind farm somewhere else, much further out.